And we're back. Welcome to the Culture and Cannabis Podcast. My name is JC Coates, here at your service. It's just me today, the full-time Tony is in Northern Nevada, servicing some of our retail partners, um, probably driving our other partner, Chuck, completely nuts, or maybe they're just having a good time day drinking. Who knows what's really going on up there? But listen, we have an incredible episode. Um, but there's a lot of stuff happening, right? With, with the Culture and Canvas team, just dive into some quick announcements really quick. Um, listen, the Hustler, the Hustler, the 24 karat gold infused one gram pre-roll. I think it's the only one on the West Coast is just crushing it right now. We're in about um, 13 stores, all in the Nevada made marijuana stores. I heard um, in, in Northern Nevada at the Sierra Whale store, um, think in the next couple of weeks, they're gonna do a buy, a buy one, get one on these things, guys. Listen, it's got the gold ash, go get it. Mythical Kush, 47%, the thing smacks. Go pick up the Hustler, right? Go pick one up. Listen, thanks for thanks for watching the podcast, by the way. Listen, we, we've been, um, We've been bringing you this podcast on a weekly basis for the last three years, right? We've been interviewing uh, different leaders, people in the community, people in the industry. Um, you know, check out the website. They're all archived, right? Go check out all those stories and dive into some, some incredible podcast episodes. But listen, today we have an incredible episode. We're going to get right into it. Um, so Reese. Harris, what's good, my man? What's up, JC, and, and, man? Listen, thanks for coming on the show, man. How are it's, you? It's a pleasure, man. Thank you for having me on today. Of course, man. So listen, let, let, let's tell everybody who you are and, and what you do and what you got going on. Well, my name is Reese Harris. I've been in the cannabis industry for about seven years now. Um, I'm the general manager over at Oasis Cannabis right now. Um, love the shop. We're, we start, We love to give back to our locals all the time. Mm. And it's just exciting to be in this industry. Nice, nice. That that is dope, man. And 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 so you, you just you just recently got over to Oasis, right? Yep. My first month. Nice. That, that's dope. Um, and congratulations. Thank on you. That, thank right? you. That, that's a big spot. And, and Oasis is really cool shop, right? I've been in there a bunch of times. It's it's kind of a become like a staple of downtown now. And uh, the way that y'all have done the marketing over there for many years. I don't know who's doing the marketing now. Maybe it's the same people. But the community has always been, you know, important. Uh, Absolutely. Down there. And it's, it's always been a good vibe. But um, so listen, man, R Reese, right? I, I mean, is, is Reese's? <laughs> yeah, is, is, is Reese's your favorite candy? Actually, it's my wife's favorite candy. It's a, it's wife's I, favorite. I think that's the reason she married me is because I had the same name. Okay. Hey, <laughs> hey, man. That's what it is. That's what it, sorry, I had to go there. I had to go there. Watching too much Caleb Presley. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. So, you know, we we met um, because you're you were a purchaser, right? Yes. You're, you're you're a cur uh, purchaser um, uh, for Silver Sage Wellness, right? Absolutely. Um, Was there for about two years. For, for about two years, right? And and, and so all right. So what what is what is a buyer, right? What is, what does a buyer do in in Nevada? So what a buyer does is we partner with all of the vendors around uh, Nevada. We got we want to get all the good products within the store. So. We go out, we hang out, we, we create these partnerships and we mm. almost become family. With me being in the industry for so long, the vendors aren't even really vendors anymore. I don't even look them as friends, they're family. So when right. we come in, we talk about the products and then we just talk about our personal lives basically for right. the rest of the time because we get our business done and we're all about mm. cannabis. We want to make sure that we have the right products in the store all times for people. Nice, nice. I mean, come on, you know, like uh, a purchaser, like a marijuana cannabis buyer in Las Vegas, that's kind of a big deal, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. I mean, just to think about it, right? I mean, like, let's think about it like 10, 20 years from now, looking back on, you know, you could be considered like the first class, right? Right. Uh, of, of purchasers, you know, what, what a, it's a kind of a big deal, right? Yeah. So, so let's talk about it. Uh, you know, one million, two million, three million. What's what's your biggest purchase? Oh man, with some companies right now, the biggest purchase I've seen is probably about half a million. Really? Yeah. Okay, dang. That's All when right. I worked over at the Essence location. We uh we had a half a million dollar order, wow. and I had to count out that payment too. So that was oh, that was very fun. <laughs> that, is, that is crazy. Wow, and that, yeah, wow, man. We don't even have to go there. That's just such a crazy thing that, that we're still having to pay people in cash out here. Right. Um. Well, all right. So, you, you know, you talk about the family and all that stuff. And I, I, I love how the cannabis community is kind of like family, right? Because like everything that we've kind of been through to kind of get it to where it is now, right? Sometimes it feels like, um, you know, 
we all have something in common, right? It's like we've all been on a shipwreck together, yep. right? But yep. we all survived and made it back to, to land, right? We have this common bond, you know. But what do you look for, like, you know, for new brands, right, that, that are popping up, right? Because you have, you have kind of like two different types, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and maybe there's more than two, but the two that I'm specifically talking about is you might have a group that has like a license, right? And they own that license, right? And then they, they, they grow the weed themselves and, and, and they make the, the production products themselves. But then you have other brands, right? That might just source and curate and it's a brand, right? To, you know, how do you kind of like balance that? And you know, who, who be, how do you choose who's the best person to onboard? So that's a good question. I, first thing I look at is the quality of the product. I want to work, I love per working with vendors who want to give back to the community as well. That's mm -hmm. the most important thing for me. Like cannabis has been in such a dark limelight for the longest time. So anybody that wants to bring cannabis into the good light and give back to the community and the customers who shop with us, that's definitely what I'm looking for. Also a good price. So that way we can give the best price to the consumer. Right. So that's kind of the things that I look like, look at. And then also if they have a name behind them, mm -hmm. um, if they're big and they're coming from a different state, we look at that. So those are some of the things we look at when I'm purchasing. Right. So, okay. So let's talk about some of the, um, maybe one of the proudest purchases that you've been, mm -hmm. that you've made, right? Because I think some, sometimes you got to be proud of a brand that you guys, you, you know, that you bring in because at the end of the day, a lot of times it's the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. It's onboarding these new brands and kind of getting the rest of the staff on board who's been one of the the most uh you know brands you've been most proud and has had most kind of positive impact of giving back that you've Ooh, brought on man that's a good question um i mean one thing that i can say is uh flower one has also been a big partner with me i know they have a lot of brands under them we're actually partnering with them right now to give back to the folded flag foundation oh, so nice, we're going to be nice. giving back to some of the vets so i'm proud every time i get to work with people like that a few other vendors that i work with that just love giving back or just Mojave, Kind. We got Redwood. They're actually partnering with us on an upcoming diaper drive that we have coming mm -hmm. in. So those are some definitely proud purchases. Um, also, another one I want to talk about is um, G5 Cultivation. That's that's one of my good buddies over there. And um, Larry Smith. Right? Larry Smith, yeah. really good dude. And um, just being able to bring him into the shops with him being one of the only black owned cultivations, that's something that's near and dear to me as well. Mm. Cause we just want to make sure that there's good equality within this cannabis yeah. community. Yeah. And that's real, man, because like, I know, I knew I've known Larry a long time. And, uh, when, when I was coming up before we had cannabis products, we were just an event. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was never a guy with a bunch of money and I was trying to create value in the cannabis space and kind of find my way in here somehow without a million dollars to buy a license. Right. And I was doing it through event marketing and it was kind of a struggle to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Right. And to, to kind of, um, you know, take this kind of underground style event to this newly regulated style and kind of garner the attention of these license holders to where they could give me money to where I could, you know, have sponsorships to produce this, this great event. Right. Um, so it, it took many, like almost two years where I was get, able to get some of the bigger sponsorships. But once it happened, it was just like a, it blew over, but it, I'll never forget, man. Like we were, we were producing this event, um, um, behind, you know, it, it was in the art district behind rebar. It was like in this freaking like back alleyway, mm -hmm. li literally, right? <laughs> but we would have about 20, 30 vendors and, and, and Larry, um, wanted to sponsor, right? And this is before Larry had his license and it was before he was even growing, right? He was in the process of getting that done. And he met me and he came and walked around the venue with me and, and he, and he, like gave me a handshake right and it mm -hmm. had like a couple hundred bucks in it and he was like yo man you know i know i know your sponsorship's only 75 bucks but you know here's here's a couple hundred you know what i mean i, I like what you're doing jc and it just meant so much right Absolutely. like he was just so like he could see like he wanted to support the, the community right you know what i mean and and i, I love that you love getting behind people like that right because Absolutely. um g5 man big big shout out to larry smith big shout out man <laughs> um so you got a new baby. Yes. Let's talk about that. Eight months old, man. Months Pride old. and joy. Oh, man. So her name is India Ray. Uh, she was born literally 11 days before my birthday. So 11, okay. for my 30th birthday presents, I, uh, present, I got a brand new baby girl. So wow. it's changed my life for the better, man. It, it, it makes me want to be a better purchaser, a better GM, a better person overall, just so mm. I can help support her 
and let her know that, hey, dad has your back and I'm not going to be afraid when my daughter gets older to let her know like, hey, you know, your daddy works in the cannabis industry. Right. So it's something I want her to be proud of too when she gets older. Yeah, it's really cool kind of what happens you know, to most men, right? Mm -hmm. um, when, when you when you have a baby, right? That that kind of shift in perspective, and uh, you know, things do get a little bit different, right? Absolutely. I have boys, so I can only imagine what it's <laughs> like having a baby girl. You know, and so this is your first. Yeah, this first is one? my first. Nice. My nice. wife and I've been together, been together for about ten years. So we waited, we enjoyed life and marriage together for a few years, and decided to have a baby. <laughs> nice, nice. That's good, man. That's good. Congratulations, Thank man. Thank you, man. That's, I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, um, mine are 15 now. You know, so, sometimes I look at them and I'm like, hey, what, what are we done here, man? <laughs> what are we doing here? It's like 15. Yeah. I can't even, I can't even imagine 15 right now. She's, she's standing on her mm -hmm. own. She's starting to try to walk. So 15, I, I'm not even ready for that. <laughs> it, it, it's, a, it's really cool because, you know, some like the kind of like the hallmarks of having kids, right? Or like some of the, the like the big, um, you know, birthdays and stuff like that, they mark like timelines in your life, you know what Absolutely. I'm saying? Of growth and stuff like that. And you start to remember all that. Um, I, I recently had the chance to kind of go through one of those experiences because when I first came out to Vegas, um, you know, I moved here from Oklahoma City with like 500 bucks in a dream, right? And I, I didn't know anyone and I became a full time single parent and it was like, shit was pretty rough honestly right yep. but it was it, and i was just trying to figure it out it was me and my son we were living at 11th and bridger um, i don't know if you know where that is but it's yes. just right downtown right um <laughs> not too far from us those old ass apartments they're still there and you know now my son goes to lva right and now we live in henderson i have kind of a nice car and we get to drive drive by that old apartment you know what i mean so it, it, it's, it's cool character. to yeah you're gonna remember where you're at now you know what i'm saying when, when she is 15 you'll be able to look back and and see how she's been able to kind of you know foreshadow some of this pivotal shift for you you know absolutely um man we just got deep right there we right? just got real deep oh, oh, man, you know. every time you bring up a kid man <laughs> i could talk about my kid all day but um those are my two passions my family and, and cannabis like right. um I, when I went to school, I went and got my degree in criminal justice because I wanted to be a DEA agent of all things, right? Okay. Um, but I, my passion was helping people. Mm -hmm. So when cannabis came about and my grandmother got pancreatic cancer, I was looking for different ways of trying to help her with her pain. Okay. Um, cannabis was a big thing that I started studying. You know, I smoked it in high school. I knew what it did for me. So I was like, hey, let's get you edible. You, maybe you'll start to eat. But it just, it sparked a passion in me. And yeah. I saw how it helped during those last few days. So I got into it when it was medical. Mm -hmm. And I just stuck with it ever since. And just to see the benefits of cannabis and how it's helped so many people, how it's helped medical peace customers and recreational cu uh, customers, mm -hmm. it's a big thing. It is a big thing. It's huge. It's been, um, and for, for me, I have a similar story. And I think a lot of people that really, that are passionate have that story, right? Mm -hmm. That's where it stems from is helping people and how the product or the, the plant actually helps people, how it impacts people, right? Um, you know, I think, you know, when you're on your path, I think this is, <laughs> could be a better path for you uh, fulfillment wise, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for me, I was selling alcohol before I got into the, the cannabis industry, you know, as a DJ and doing events down there and, and the, the products that we were creating and, and giving to the customers, right? Wasn't Im uh, impacting them in a positive way. They were getting drunk and getting sick and throwing up and getting hangovers and, you know, splitting up relationships and all that. Um, w I, that was one of the first thing I noticed is that the, the products and how they affected the people and how that was in turn affecting me, affecting my fulfillment level. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, a, it's a blessing, right? That I think a lot of people miss that part of what, what's really happening in the Absolutely. cannabis industry, right? Everybody um, gets into it, just sees the dollars and they think about the right. dollars, but it's way bigger than that. We're impacting people who might have had alcohol issues, who have had pain pill issues, who have cancer, who have whatever. We're infecting those people for the good. Like we're selling medicine that's good for people and there's no bigger bigger joy than that, just right. being able to help people. Yeah, it, I mean, that, that is true, that is true. Um, 
So listen, all right, let's talk about like what what kind of what are your favorite products? What do you like to get down with? Oh man, good old flour, man. Me too. I, I'm yeah. a hey, I, I have my honey badger. I like to dab every now and then, mm. but there's nothing better than breaking down a swisher and rolling up a good old. Oh, man. okay, you get the swisher and everything. <laughs> I get the I get the diamond okay. swishers and we going at it. Okay, nice, nice. So like, all right, favorite cultivators in in Vegas? Can, are you allowed to do that? Or it's it's like. Ooh, I, I mean, I'm, it ain't no shame in it. So, yeah, okay. you know, city trees, when I go for the vapes, I go for mm -hmm. my city trees when right. I'm going for how, the flower. How come? How come? They've just always been a great product. And yeah. especially now working over at Oasis and knowing the whole story behind the products and seeing how they want to give back to the customers. That's yeah. something, again, that I can stand behind. Right, right. Okay. Um, when it comes to rosin or rosin carts, man, there's, there's a few uh, vendors that I love working with. Virtue Camp, love those. And but really, when it comes to flour, whew, there's so many good ones out there. I, that's there's a lot of good one. ones right now. Yeah. There's a lot of good ones. Remedy, that's a good one. I love uh, that. Bio Jesus is amazing. Um, your culture and cannabis, cannabis pre rolls, yeah. man, amazing. That's the smack. Right? I'm not even. I'm not just saying that because we're on the podcast. You. You came and sat with me, mm -hmm. and we talked about it, and they were big sellers. I tried yeah. it myself, and I was just like, wow. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. All that, all that flower has been kissed by the sun a little bit. You know what <laughs> I mean? So, but yeah. So, all right. So, I mean, you know, it's the cannabis industry, right? Like it, it, it's almost like a time capsule. We talk about it on the show all the time when it starts as medical, um, or, you know, starts when it's, you know, traditional market into medical and then, you know, into, into recreational, um, everything changes through that that time period right the people change um the the movements kind of change right the events around the communities kind of change um the products change right yes. and, and you know you see some medical products that are around during medical but then they're not here anymore right yep. and, and and all that stuff so like th through all the all the products and all the shifting and think what what, what do you think nevada is missing that's a that's a good question. I feel like what Nevada is missing is just more education for our for our consumers. Mm -hmm. When we first started this, everybody just wanted highest THC. They were like, "Oh, I just want THC, THC, THC." Um, now that we're starting to tell people about cannabinoids and and what you want to look at, like uh, what you want to look for in your terpene profile and things like that, I feel like that's what's really missing because we have such good cultivators out here that even though it's not testing 29%, mm -hmm. the cannabinoids are crazy. Like yeah. the terpenes are great on it. So if we had more education, I think that's what we're missing in. How do you think the, the best way to educate them? Do you think that, whose responsibility is it? Is it the brands? Is it the retails? Is it everyone's? It's, it's everyone's. It yeah. comes from the bud tender. When you have that bud tender experience, we need to take pride in what we're selling to these consumers. It shouldn't just be like, hey, I want to come in and get an eighth. You give someone an eighth and you walk out. Talk right. about it. Say, how do you want to feel? What, are you, what Do you have any pains? Is there something you don't want to feel? Mm -hmm. So that way we can get in depth and know what people really, what type of medicine people really need. Because mm -hmm. right now it's just, okay, I try something. I like it. I'm going to go and get the same thing. If it's out of it, Oh, I'll wait till it gets back in. But there's such a variety of products out here. Yeah. So we need to have those bud tender educations. We need to have those one on one. Um, one thing I like to say in my store is we sell customer service with a side of cannabis. So when I say that, there's plenty of other dispensaries you can go to. But when I want you, to, when you walk into Oasis, I want you to have an experience. I want yeah. you to get that education. I want you to walk out that store feeling fulfilled. Like I didn't just get weed here. I got knowledge. I got great service, I got a great ambiance, and I got to give back to the community. So yeah. that's, that's that's what I think. That's nice. That's nice. So so when we met, you're the um the the, the purchaser, right? Yep, what, director what, of retail over. Is that what it was? Director yes. of retail. Okay. So, and that and, and and buying cannabis was part of just one task that you did over yes. there. And then so now you're the GM. Yes. Uh, and, and then is buying one of your, your tasks over there? So or? I actually have a purchasing manager, who, manager who's amazing, but two heads are always better than one. Sure. We like to partner together. Yeah. And teamwork makes the dream work. So yeah. we, we go together. We look at what vendors are out there. We, we try things. We put our heads together to make sure we have the best quality products in the store for our customers. Nice. Nice. So like for a GM, right? So do you do the scheduling? 
I actually have a store manager yeah, who does nice. my schedule. Very nice, like, nice. The nice. best yeah. thing about being a GM is that you have great people under you yeah. that can fill in those tasks. My biggest thing as a GM is investing in my people. Yes. That's that's my number one job is making sure that you hear them, that you're helping develop them, helping them grow. So when you get another dispensary or when things open up, you have a bench that you're ready. So that's mm. my main job as a GM is just building the culture around cannabis. I love that. I love that. So, all right, let's talk about leadership, right? You're, you're in a leadership role. You get to impact your employees and all that stuff. Where do you, you know, is a leader born or is a leader created, right? It's probably a little bit of both. Where, where do you get your leadership tactics from? Mentors. Um, I, when I worked in retail at Ross, I had a lot of great store managers and I had a lot of store managers that I didn't like that much, but whoever gave me opportunities, I, I took those good qualities. I said, Hey, when I become a manager, when I get into leadership, I want to use those tactics. Even when I got into cannabis, I have mentors over here. Ranch and Shepherd is one of my biggest mm -hmm. mentors. Um, Sequoia Turner, who actually got me into the cannabis, well, not got me into the cannabis industry, but gave me my first chance to be in management over at Essence. So just looking at those types of people, that's who I want to surround myself around and that's who I want to be to my staff. It's just someone who's caring, who's willing to take the risk and willing to invest in them. Nice, nice, nice. That's, that's good, man. Yeah, I mean, you, you got all the right answers, man. <laughs> I think it's I think it's because you got the experience and you really enjoy what you're doing. I love you what know? I'm doing, and, and it comes through. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you know, it's been it's it's a pleasure to sit here and talk with you because a, a lot of times, you know, you know, I'm a seller of cannabis, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then so, so there's always this kind of like interesting relationship with with the buyer and, and the, um, the seller. You know what I mean? And, and and some guys let me get to know them, and some guys don't, or whatever. And you, you just have to respect that, right? So it's it's cool to get to to know you. You know what I mean? I appreciate that. The same. I'm I'm honored to be on the show. And like I said, anybody that I work with in this industry, you become family after a while because that's yeah. just the type of person I am. We see each other each and every day almost. We we email back and forth when we have issues. We're calling each other. We work those things out. I remember when I had my first child a few months ago, the, I got more gifts from vendors than I did my own family. So yeah. it's, that's yeah. the type of culture that cannabis brings you. Yeah. So, okay. So you have, you have this kind of landscape with, with the purchasers, if we can kind of stay on the subject. Um, some of them are kind of like quote unquote in-house employees. And some of them are like quote unquote consultants. Isn't, is that correct? So, or, or did it used to be kind of that way a little bit more than it is now? So, that's a hard one. So you're saying when it comes to purchasing, yeah. if it's just more consultants or if it's just a purchaser. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. We have purchasing managers who just talk to those people. And then your consultants are also many purchasers in, in, a, in a sense, because when we get those samples, we give them products to sample. Let us know how you feel. Would you purchase this? How does the packaging look? Yeah. How does it smell? They give us that information. So then we can go back and talk to the vendor and say, hey, this is a great product. We want to bring it in the store or, Hey, we think this is going to be good, but if mm. you guys tweak this or this, yeah. I think that it would be a good product. So it's, it's a mixture of both. Yeah. So what do you think makes a good buyer? Someone who is responsive, open and knows how to work well with others. Like, yeah. um, the biggest thing is just responding. Yeah. Like if you don't need something, say you don't need it. If, right. if there's an issue, <laughs> Reach out to the person and communicate and let's get the issue worked out. Um, I know we're all busy. I know a million things happens in, mm -hmm. the, in this industry, but that's what I think makes a good buyer is just keeping a great relationship with those vendors yeah. and not when you need them all the time. Right. No, I love that because you never know when you, you, you might need them, yeah. right? And that just that's just life, right? Um, I, I, had, I do a lot of cold calling, right? And I, I do most of the sales for culture and cannabis. Cause I enjoy it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I love to do the cold calls and I love to create products with a lot of value and impact and then go and showcasing them to people. Right. Um, but sometimes the buyers don't want it, right. Or they yeah. don't need it or whatever. Um, but I always, it, it always just drives me nuts when they don't reply. Right. And I think, um, one of your partners at Oasis, I sent him over the menu, nice, nice thing. And, and he just wasn't taking on any new vendors. Right. And he just told me, and I was, I just appreciated it so much. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> As opposed to like, you know, the thousand emails or whatever, you know, I, and it's not like it hurts my feelings. Right. But it just, it's, that shows leadership, right. Out of, a, out of a person that you want to work with. Right. That knows how to like communicate. And it shows, um, it shows a little bit of respect. Like I, yeah, with right? me, 
I want to see everybody win in the cannabis community. So if someone comes in with a new product or a product, I always try to find room for them on the shelf. Yeah. And I'll tell them, hey, it worked or it didn't work. Yeah. But at least I gave you a chance to try to sell your product on mm -hmm. the shelf. That's We just got to come together yeah. and work together. And that's so valuable, too, because some some people might get mad at that. You know what I mean? But, like, honestly, we just released a, a 24 karat gold joint, right? And that was because a buyer said, hey, you guys should make a gold joint, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, it's just that interesting type of relationship. And I, I, I love the fact that you're more open and, and want to, like, work with, with the, the buyers, you know? Absolutely. Um, or the, the, the sellers. Um, well, listen, man, um, I don't have a whole lot more, more questions, you know, I, I, and I know that you're, you're in a busy, you have to go stock the store tonight, right? You gotta, <laughs> yeah, you gotta, gotta do inventory, we right? We got inventory tonight right. at one. What, what, what is inventory? What does that look like? So inventory is something we do monthly. It's just, basically it's your checks and balances, making yep. sure that everything matches up in metric, mm -hmm. making sure that what you say is in the system is actually there. It makes sure that there's no theft going on. Mm -hmm. So you got to go in there, you got to do it monthly. And even though we have a whole crew who does it, I like to be there. So I'm going to count with you. We're in a team nice. together. Like yeah. that's the biggest thing. So I make it a point to be at mostly all my inventories with all my team. Nice. Nice. Man, counting count cannabis. I mean, you know, it could, it could be worse, right? <laughs> have you ever tried to count a thousand pre-rolls? No. It is not uh, easy. I mean, yes, yes I have. <laughs> when we first got started, um, I had to package we participate in some of the packaging mm -hmm. yeah so that was kind of a nightmare oh, um, man. you know speaking of pre-rolls too man it's it's just crazy on how the whole industry is kind of shifted uh, mm -hmm. people started off with just edibles and now pre-rolls are like one of the biggest things that everyone goes after like right. packaged flour is cool but yeah. pre-rolls happen to be king. well at least in my shop pre-rolls are king more than infused pre-rolls Infused pre-rolls are making a comeback because yeah. honestly, I, there was a lull in infused pre-rolls for, uh, for a while, but now it's starting to come back. You're seeing so many different types of infused pre-rolls, yeah. rosin infused, THC diamond infused, yeah. um, shatter infused. So it is making a big comeback. What, what's your favorite kind of infused pre-roll? Oh man, I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Oh, okay. If you remember the Corrupts Moon Rocks pre-rolls. Oh, of course. Yeah. Those were that was yeah. one of the best infused pre rolls I've ever had yeah. because there I there was not one time that I finished one yeah. by myself. A funny story is that um, we I think we did the first purchase for him when I was at New Leaf. Oh, that's funny. And it, <laughs> and it was actually my first purchase as a because I was like the marketing director, mm -hmm. and then they would let me do purchases when it had ad added marketing value. And um, he was like the first one that I brought. I was like, yo, this is corrupt. You know, I, yeah. I listened to him as a kid and shit. Had him do a pop up at one of our stores. He yeah. came in with a low ride. Yes, and he was, brought it, it to the media store crazy. too. Yeah, I have videos and, and everything. Yeah, we had, we, I have, we had him on the podcast too. Okay. I have an old, um, um, and he was drunk, right? He was like, <laughs> I don't know, man. But yeah, shout out to the corrupt. Shout yeah. out, man. Yeah, th those moon rocks. Yeah, man. Those are, but did they get messy? Could you, you know, see, they you those were the type of period you can't put out and relight because it. it's that, one and done. It's yeah. one if you're gonna smoke it, you gotta go the whole way. Got so okay. that's a two person. Uh, that was a two person joint in my eyes. If you took one to the face, you yeah. were a champ. It was game because over. You, it's night night time after taking yeah. one of those. Yeah, that's good. Now nah, it makes me. Do they even sell those anymore? <laughs> they don't even sell them anymore, sell man. Anymore, but that, yeah. that's how you know. Like you've seen so many yeah. different changes. There's place. There's products that we used to see, like you said, and then you don't see them anymore. Yeah. But people are always developing something new. Yeah, yeah, and you got to keep the pressure on. You know, it takes a lot of love to to keep. You know these these products out in the market. You know, absolutely. As we expand to different states, we're experiencing that. You know, it's like you you. It takes a lot of energy. You know. Um, it takes energy and it takes passion. And if you yeah. keep it going and you keep focused on what you want, it's going to happen. It'll fall over. It'll Absolutely. tip over. You know, listen, thanks for coming on, man. No, I appreciate I it. Thank you, man. Thank yeah. you so much for <laughs> We're gonna do one of those real yeah. quick. Um, so, so, so what's going on with you? Let, let's tell us. Tell us what you got coming up. Give us a plug. Absolutely. So what we have coming right now over at Oasis is we're partnering and doing a diaper drive right now. Okay. We're partnering with some big partners. We have Mojave, Kind, Redwood. We're going to be supplying people with pre-rolls if they come in and donate diapers. We're also going to have pre-rolls for sale where all that revenue will go straight to the diaper drive. Nice. Um, that's near and dear to my heart. I love giving it back to people, as I said. We're also a VIP sponsor for the Black Las Vegas Food Festival coming up from oh, nice. October 15th to the 17th over okay. in the Arts District. 
Um, so that's another big thing that we're doing. And the thing that has me most excited is Thanksgiving time. Okay. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving back to the community. So we're going to be getting Thanksgiving dinners and we're going to be giving it back to the customers. You come in and shop, somebody, some lucky winner each and every day is going to get a free Thanksgiving dinner on us. Nice. That's and we have more man. surprises. That's great. Man. I love that, man. Well, th thanks for coming on. Um, you know, I appreciate it. Where, where's the Oasis? Let's Oasis is on 1800 South Industrial Road. Just look to the left when you're driving down there and you're going to see the building. Nice. Nice, man. Reese Harris, man. I appreciate it. Thanks no, for the time. I thank you, JC. Yeah. Have a great day, man. Cool, man. Thank you. Boom. There you have it, guys. Listen, uh, another incredible podcast. Um, you know, guys, check out the podcast, right? Go to the website. All these, all these episodes are archived. Um, there, there's some incredible stories, um, incredible people. Um, check it out. And I'll, we'll just leave you with that. So we'll check you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Peace. Yeah.